this The Loop 121 edition of the NASCAR Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Bird Dogs Shorts. Dominate summer with an amazing pair of shorts and a free Yeti style tumbler when you order over at birddogs.com slash pool. That's birddogs.com slash pool. Driver, start your in and pull those belts up tight as the Sports Gambling Podcast Network presents the NASCAR Gambling Podcast. I'll wreck my mom to win a championship. I'll wreck your mom to win a championship. With all the news and the best bets for your NASCAR weekend. It refrains me from not beating the out of you right now because you ask me stupid questions but since i'm on probation i suppose that that's uh, in- improper to say as well if you could talk about racing things we could talk about racing things. now here are your hosts rod via gomez and cody zeeb Even when it looks like I'm bathed in heavenly light, we are still talking racing things here on the NASCAR Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. He's Cody Zeeb. I am Rod, bathed in heavenly light via Gomez. And uh, yeah, buddy, we we begin my on-location <laughs> world of fun here. And uh, it already is very interesting, to say the least. Hey, you've been uh, spicing it up for the YouTube viewers here lately, uh, keeping up with some some different scenery. It does look like the heavens are glowing down on you. I think that that's probably a, a proper endorsement of uh, your picks for today. Ah, uh, yes, and I'm trying very hard to make it to where not everything in this is all visible. So, sorry, you have to deal with the with everything that's going on around us. But uh, yes, we are here to talk Xfinity. We are here to talk about the just uh, what's the Loop 121. Chicago street racing, Cody Xfinity's never done it, obviously. And let's not forget they're going to be the first. Like yes. I know that I know that the cup guys are going to get after it on Sunday, but Xfinity gets to crack at it first. Yeah, exactly. That's uh which is kind of uh the cool thing, right? These guys get the first crack at this. Uh, you know, the cup series drivers will be watching intently trying to learn everything they can from how this race goes. Right. And, and, what ends up uh, happening in this Xfinity series race. So uh, cup guys will be glued to the TV. They'll be glued to the TV because they're not allowed to race in this race. NASCAR has the rule when they go to a new track, they don't want the unfair advantage. Um, There are some different scenarios like North Wilkesboro. They were allowed to race in the truck series race, not a points paying race, blah, 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 so on and so forth. But um, yeah, no, no cup guys allowed to race in this one. So uh, none of them will be entered. So it is all Xfinity Series regulars and a shit ton of road course ringers in this one. Uh, they really, really brought in the ringers for this race, Rod. We got 43 entries for 38 spots. So five drivers are going to go home. Um, let's see. Joey Gase is in the 08. Justin Marks, obviously very notable. Uh, he's going to be in the number 10 colleague car. He, of course, co-owner of Trackhouse Racing with Pitbull. Uh, I would say a former race car driver, but it's not even really former. He still does uh, some race car stuff. He hasn't been in necessarily an Xfinity car for a little while, but uh, he's done some sports car stuff, which obviously leads right into a type of race like this, right? So that's pretty cool to see. Connor Mozak is back in the Gibbs number 19. Uh, Parker Chase is in the 24. Uh, Sherman is in the 28. I should probably know his first name since we're going to be talking about him in a little bit. <laughs> What is his first name, Rod? Where is he? What the fuck? He's not even on here. Uh, Brent. There so, it is. Brent, Brent, Brent Sherman. Sherman. Yes. yes. He's going to be in the 28 for Sieg. Uh, somebody Castro. <laughs> I just, Andre Castro. There it is. He's going to be in the 34. The Jesse Awuji car. Uh, Alex LeBay is going to be in the 35. Uh, let's see. Who is this guy? Alex Gunete gonna go with that he's in the dgm car joe graf is in the 38 
Ryan Ellis, Sage Karam, Preston Pardis. Uh, let's see. Brad Perez is in the Emerlin Gase car. Uh, Dexter Stacy is going to be in the t- the Hill Motorsports. Dawson Cram. Miguel Paluto is going to be in the fifth Junior Motorsports car. Oh, that is a list. Some of these guys I've never even heard of. Some of these guys I'd never heard of until today when I decided I was going to bet on them. And it's going to be fun. <laughs> Yeah, and really with the unknown already of this track and the unknown of the drivers on this track. And listen, a lot of those guys may not even end up making it onto the track itself or onto the course itself to actually run the race. So, you know, beware. I mean, we're going to throw out some names that uh, that are actually uh, could not make the race. So as we always tell you, especially in this situation, the reason that we're betting on them because the value is fantastic if they do make the race and if they do end up pulling where we think they're going to pull. So, um, but you never know until it's time. So just keep an eye on that. And listen, I mean, for this, it's going to be just a, a crazy way to start this, this, uh, Chicago weekend, the Chicago racing waste. And if you've not listened to the actual cut betting episode yet, go back, give that a listen. Uh, cause we did sort of break down what the track is talked about the fact that there are what seven right-hand corners in this. There are, uh, a couple of straightaways that if this were an F1 track, that would be DRS zones because they're good long straightaways going headlong into those right turns. And I tell you, I've been watching Cody on Twitter, the simulations, because they've been people have been posting their sim races on this track. And I mean, they make it look easy and like it's not going to be that big of a deal, but I'm willing to bet that it's going to be a pretty big deal. Oh, absolutely. I mean, 90 degree right hand turns, multiple ones throughout the course. Uh, it, it is going to be a big deal. I've not had the chance to jump on iRacing yet this week, but I need to do so just to check out the track for myself because, man, it's uh, this this course is something else. It's uh, uh, yeah, let's let's do the break and then we can get into the rest of it. Rod. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, I want to see. Actually, I want to see you post one of your iRacing things if you do it. That I'm, be- I, I'll have to uh, I'll have to take a I don't I'll probably go pretty slow, so it's not too embarrassing, but uh, <laughs> I'm not much of a road course guy. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if you do it, we need to get you in some bird dogs so you'll look fantastic as you're going around the Chicago street course because bird dogs makes everybody look fantastic. Let's face it. They've got the fitting shorts for you that are totally different than those cotton stiff, ridiculous shorts that everybody likes to wear. No, no. Bird dogs fit you like a glove, make you look sculpted, make those legs look absolutely gorgeous. Telling you they do the same thing that Lululemon does, but they fit way better doing it. They've fixed the issue of being all stiff and rigid and uncomfortable by giving you cloud knit fabric. And it looks just like khaki, but stretches to give you a way slimmer fit. You don't have to sacrifice all movement. That's the best thing about it. Plus, look, it's getting hot in here in California. Need some anti-sweat wicking fabric and stink wicking fabric to keep me cool, dry, and not smelling like I have been in a sauna for 16 hours. Or, like Cody likes to say, a long day of swamp ass. You definitely don't have those in your bird dogs. So, be like everybody that's cool. Get yourself some bird dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash pool. Use the promo code pool for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order of bird dogs. That's birddogs.com slash pool for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. I promise you that. You, uh, you, you say that it's getting hot there, Rod. What, uh, what is your definition of it's getting hot? Well, where I'm at currently, I am in Southern California, so it is not necessarily as hot, but where I left up there in Northern California, it's getting to be about 106. So okay. that's, that's pretty damn hot. It was pretty warm. We did hit triple digits for the first time this year here in Nebraska today. So, uh, yeah, it's fucking hot. Bird dogs, good idea. Get rid of help help get rid of that swamp ass. Yeah, you do not want any of that swamp ass. So get yourself some bird dogs. Eliminate the swamp. I don't know that that's the official tagline of bird dogs, but uh, it I should feel like be. Should... I mean, yeah, you know, I don't want to take all the credit for for marketing the bird dogs, but uh, gets rid of the uh, gets rid of the swamp ass is really is a perfect tagline. I mean, if if ever there was good one written, this is the right. one that's written. Yeah. So straight to the point. You know what you're getting. Great. I love it. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, again, straight to the point. We know what we're getting is not the definition of what we're happening right now. Yeah. What are what are what are the key words this weekend, Rod? Uh, unknown, chaos. uncertainty, chaos. 
what super oh, speedway man. style betting like yep. there's a million different ways to approach this track and all of them just are throw your hands in the air and say let's just yeah. have some fun and, and yeah we talked about it yesterday on the Terry show of course but if you haven't had a chance to listen to that we'll touch on it here right now as well uh, nobody knows what to expect this weekend right there, there's just there's not a lot of weeks we can go in and say this is probably how it's going to be or we can see the race going this way this week nobody has any clue we have no idea but are we not going to bet on this race of course we're going to bet on this race because that's what we're here for right we still love to bet on it you can still find fun ways to bet on it you treat this much like a super speedway right we're going to be in atlanta next week this is the same way we're going to bet there you look around you find good value on things you decrease your bankroll for the week you just you, again it's gambling you go into all of it knowing that you could lose it all right but you go into this week expecting to lose it all then anything you win is icing on top just enjoy this keep in mind like we said yesterday this is an event they've got the chain smokers they've got miranda lambert they've got all these concerts all this other stuff going on you keep forgetting the black crows cody i, I gotta sorry. stop you when sorry. you forget the black crows the it's black, the black crows, crows most importantly Jesus. the black crows are going to be yes. there i'm sure somebody else is going to be there we haven't mentioned sorry for you but uh yeah anyways it's a it's a whole event right this whole thing is an event uh i was listening to derek's betting preview show tonight and he tossed out that uh if it gets out of hand late right probably going to be some cardboard on the track took a shot right at me well it was man first time i was able to listen live in a while softball's over on wednesday nights finally and uh, and he just comes straight with the knife thanks derek i appreciate it but, uh, <laughs> but uh, to his point nascar wants it to be exciting right so it could come down to there's cardboard on the track it falls out of a 50-story building next to the track i don't know what's going to happen but something could happen and al capone just, raises from the dead and yeah, the track yeah, is taken knows, over right? by the ghost of al capone it's, uh yeah i mean if you read the facebook comments from some of the boomers out there there's going to be bullets flying across the course while they're racing it's, it's going to be crazy so who knows what's going to happen but keep that in mind when you go to place these bets but that gives us a chance to bet on guys we don't normally bet on. Gives us chances to place wacky bets. Gives us chances. Again, if you haven't listened to the Cup Series episode, if you ever <laughs> wanted to bet on Andy Lally in your life before, we found three or four different ways to bet on the guy yesterday. So go back and listen to that. Again, fun week to bet. Just go into this, and it's, it's going to be a really good time. I feel like we found some good stuff. There is some good value out there um and uh, yeah it's uh, man again I'm, I'm just excited the unknown is so exciting like who knows what this weekend is going to look like and i'm excited to get to the part where we find out what it actually is well and to me it's the fact that when we looked at these these bets and when i broke down these guys uh, there was a lot, obviously, of, of of the new faces that I looked at, and I thought, okay, that's that's kind of fun. But it was actually, I liked the value, like you said, in some of the guys that we normally bet on, and and I was happy enough to, I had to stop myself from making another Junior Motorsports card um, because as I was doing my research, Cody, and as I was putting together my card, I started typing up as I normally do outside of the dock what I'm going to put in the dock, and I stopped real quick after about the third bet, and I said um wait a second i can't do this. uh that's another junior motorsports car and i can't put him in this so um had to stop myself from doing it cody yeah that's uh you know probably advisable it didn't necessarily pay off exactly great last week but uh yeah <laughs> again this is it's gonna be interesting because xfinity for the most part seems to be i don't want to say more predictable than the cup series but there, there's kind of a certain few guys that are more at the top, whereas the Cup Series is more spread out. Obviously, those are the best guys. I, it's going to be really interesting to see if, you know, some of these guys in that aren't normal, you know, regulars in the series, the ringers, quote unquote, can do something. We've got a couple of guys. I mean, there is two ringers in a Joe Gibbs car and a Junior Motorsports car. So there's ringers in very good cars. Um, and so it's, it's going to be interesting to kind of see how this all plays out and i'm really excited to bet on this race really excited to watch this race and of course this is the lead up right this is the first chance we get to see this street course what it's like as we lead into sunday for for the big race of course i'm more excited and stop me if if you did because i couldn't find anything on jensen button uh as far as a bet is concerned because 
I, I feel like I would have taken that bet nine ways out of Sunday. Jensen Button going to be in that Rick Ware car, that 15 car. Now, listen, we know it's Rick Ware. We understand that. But this is Jensen Button. And Jensen Button has done one thing over the course of his life well, and that is run an F1 car, which is exactly the type of track that they're kind of on right now is an F1 track. It's a street track, which is F1 does that all the time. So if anybody's going to be good in a Rick Ware car, on a street track, I think it's going to be Jensen Button. Yeah, well, and he's kind of, and I think that they, I think that they recognize that. And so that's the other thing too. And we probably should have talked about this more on the Cup Series show yesterday, but like Shane Van Gisbergen too, like he's going to be in a track house car. Like that's a great equipment he's going to be in, right? But you look at his odds and like for a top 10, he's only like plus 160. Like, ugh, it's, it's kind of gross, you know? And then like you go to Jensen Button, He's at plus 320 in a Rick Ware car. But you look at Andy Lally in a Rick Ware car, he's at plus 1,700. So just a massive difference. And I think that's probably why we didn't talk much about Button or uh, Gisbergen. I think it's Gisbergen. Gis something like that. I don't know. I probably butchered it, but that's okay. Because they're yeah, just, the comments will let you know, Cody. Yeah, they'll let, it, they'll let me know. But uh, it, their odds are just so chopped up because of, I guess, the higher expectations for them. Um, and that's where I think we obviously got, got in on the Lally stuff. It's, it's, you know, again, long shots for a reason, but, uh, but just to, com for comparison's sake, I mean, you've got one Rick Ware car at plus three, what did I say? Plus three twenty five or not even all he's plus, where'd he go? Oh, I disappeared. Yeah. Plus three twenty, and Lally's all the way at 17 to one. So it's just, uh, they're all over the board this week. And, and yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting interesting thing from the books this week. I feel like the Xfinity series again, no top 10 odds. That's mm, Xfinity and trucks. If we could get top 10 odds, and that's probably why they don't give it to us again. I get that. But it was a little tougher to find Xfinity bets with as much value because they don't offer those top 10s and so it, it's a big difference in a top 10 and a top 5. Yeah, and I would have liked to, like I said, at least a head-to-head -head with Button. That would have been that would have been yeah. something that I looked for. Well, yeah, I would have, why not put Button and Van Gisberg in a head-to-head? -head, uh, or I guess they've got them priced enough differently. They probably didn't want to do that. But even Lally, Lally, I mean, yeah, or yeah, Button and Lally. But obviously, they're viewing them completely differently, having them fourteen points apart on their top ten odds. I guess so. Probably why they didn't. But again. If the books could get a little more creative, it would be extremely nice. But uh, they're kind of bland a lot of weeks. <laughs> well, you know what's not bland? All the weeks. Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is always popping over there. Best Ball Mania 4 is here. Underdog Fantasy is giving away $15 million. Fantasy football, man. You got to love it. You got to love Best Ball. You got to love being able to just set it and forget it for weeks on end. Uh, underdog Pick'em is also a great way to get down on your favorite MLB and NFL season player props. There's so many ways to win over at Underdog. And Underdog is available in so many states. So if you don't got a legally gambling state like I do, head over to Underdog. Make sure you can take advantage of that. Head over there to UnderdogFantasy.com right now. Use the promo code SGPN for a free 100% deposit bonus up to $100. That's UnderdogFantasy.com promo code SGPN. Shameless plug, Rod. On Thursday, I have an article coming out uh, for Underdog. Ooh. They have a pick em game on Underdog. Um, and again, Underdog's available in a lot of states that don't have legal betting. And, of course, the pick em isn't betting, but it's it's a way to get in on props, right? And so you can go in, and, and it's it's like building a, a parlay of props in, in a way, right? And so you, you can go in, and they've got over-unders on – passing yards or rushing yards and receiving yards or touchdown passes, touchdown receptions, rushing touchdown, all of that stuff for like a billion players. My article's on 10 different guys and, and numbers I like over or under on certain things. So definitely give that a check out. And uh, yeah, get if you don't have underdog at this point, first of all, what are you doing? But 100% <laughs> bonus. I mean, come on. That's, you, oh, man, that's great. And best ball and drafting best ball teams left and right. Underdog is uh, is the way to go. Once they get into the NASCAR space, whew, watch out. 
Yeah, and best ball. I, I, man, I've done so well on best ball in the. I mean, you just you pick your team and then you just roll with it for the rest of the season. Well, I just, mean, I'm notorious for. It, it gives you. It gives you the the best part of of fantasy is the drafting, right? Like, so you get to draft so many different teams. You don't have to worry about going into managing. You don't have to worry about setting the lineups. You don't have to worry about uh, about placing waivers and making trades. Like, you draft the team, you and you forget about like you just check back later on and you see how it's doing. You don't have to worry about start sit decisions. Oh, I should have started this guy that week. Of course, this is the week he goes off when I have him on the bench. Doesn't matter because he just gets plugged in. Best ball, uh, all fantasy football is great to play, but best ball is uh, is one of the better ways to play for sure. I concur. Well, let's not talk about fantasy football anymore, even though it's both of our passions for sure. Uh, but NASCAR is definitely the passion. It is, of course, the Loop 121 on the Chicago Street Course in Chicago, Illinois. 55 laps around this 2.2-mile road course for a 121-mile race. Talked about it on the betting show. This uh, this track pretty much just looks like a dog. I mean, if you if you put a dog up there, I don't know, if you go Google a Bedlington Terrier, you will see, uh, and and thank you to my daughter, my youngest daughter, for loving those dogs for me to be able to see that dog in there. Or maybe it's a Scottish Terrier. I don't know, but it's a Terrier of some kind. Uh, but yes, there are. Let us know. Let us much, know what kind of Terrier you think it might be. <laughs> yeah, please let us know in the comments what kind of Terrier uh, that looks like. But yes, it's got uh, it's got pretty decent size uh, straightaways on on some of those turns, and then of course uh, seven. What did I say? Seven ninety degree angle turns, kind of a sloping. Uh, turn in between the the three and four but yeah this is this is going to be a monster i mean it's going to be all these guys can take to not accelerate to six thousand miles an hour in those straightaways only to realize oh shit i have to hit the brakes because i'm about to turn a full 90 degrees to the right uh so yeah like i said this is this is going to be a very very uh interesting way to start the weekend with these xfinity guys especially given that we saw how aggressive they were in Nashville last week. <laughs> yes, aggression, not thing that lacks in the Xfinity series for sure. Uh, it's it's going to be a good race. Again, real tight corners or sharp turns. You get one or two cars wrecked in a corner, it could create super speedway type of wrecks just from cars piling in. So going to be interesting to see how that all works out. All right, Rod, you ready to get into the bets? Let's get into some bets. I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's get into the bets. I'm going to start with Miguel Paluto. Uh, he is in, uh, it's very important to note this. He is in the junior motorsports number 88 car. It's the fifth junior motorsports entry. This is the car that Dale jr. Drives when he, uh, comes down and they'll have other guys in this car every once in a while. It doesn't run every week, but it is a junior motorsports car fully and completely. So I think that's important because we know that those cars are good. We know that those cars should be reliable. Um, they're still going to have good, you know, crew chief, a good pit crew members. Of course, it's the fifth team, so and, and they don't run every week, so it's not going to be the same as the one or the eight or the seven or you know the nine. But it, it's still going to be a solid team, so I think that's important. I think Paluto's getting slept on a little bit. A top five plus three hundred over on Bet sixty uh, Bet three sixty five. Um, he is a Brazilian driver. He's full time in the Porsche GT three series. Um, he's a four time champion of that series. He has got seven Xfinity series starts uh, twice. He has finished inside of the top 10 um, and he's actually got 73 truck series uh, starts. So it's not like these, these heavy stock cars, right? I, we had this conversation was had in the discord. They're not stock cars anymore, but we still call them stock cars, right? Cause that's just what they're referred to as. So uh, it's not, and, and again, a truck, not a car, I guess either, but, He's been in the stock truck slash cars before. He's comfortable in those. Um, he was 13th place this season at Coda. Uh, he finished ninth at Coda last season, seventh of the Daytona Road Course in 2021. So Paluto doesn't have a top five finish yet, but you you put in that sports car uh, racing that he's got the the street set the street smarts right. He's got that experience. You're putting him in a good car. Uh, again, he he could not only go out and just have a fast car and have a good day. If he's able to avoid any chaos that may ensue, he's going to have a chance to put himself in position to get a top five. A three to one, I feel like that's a good uh, value way to start off the betting card. 
Tell me the last time anybody put a bet on Paluto. Uh, I, I want to, uh, if you if you have in the past, I want to see the ticket. Put it in the comments because there you go. Uh, that, my friends, is a, <laughs> yeah. Again, that's a probably, fun a fun flex. Probably not a guy we're going to talk about again. I don't know what his schedule is. I don't know if he'll be back for any of the other road courses, but we may not bring him back up again. But if you're going to get in on him, this is this is probably the week to do it. Uh, that's a lot of fun. Well, somebody we've talked about a lot is my first bet and another junior motorsports driver, which again, surprise, surprise. I know. And I told you, I stopped myself from making this an all, uh, junior motorsports card, but I couldn't leave Sam Mayer off of this. Uh, his top five odds are at plus two twenty over there on bet three sixty five. Uh, and, and look for Sam Mayer again, we've talked about how incredibly difficult it is for these junior motorsports cars to get out of their own way. But I will say that in two of the last three races, he has been a third place car, Sam Mayer. One of those being Portland, where he did finish in third place. Uh, Sonoma, he ended up in 10th place, but pretty respectable race for uh, for Sam Mayer there on that road course. Earlier in the season in Austin, he finished seventh here uh, on that track. So not a bad road course racer. Obviously, we just talked about how one of the one of the guys who doesn't even race full time in the series can find his way to a top five finish in Paluto. But that tells me that a junior motorsports regular driver can finish in f- at least fifth place as well. Um, and so, like I said, it, it, to me, I, I feel like this is a solid opportunity for him to show that he is legit, that he can do well uh, and, and finish in the top five in these. Still a young guy. I mean, still a very young driver with a lot to prove. Um, but is somebody that I think you can take a chance on, especially at plus 220. Top five odds are not the greatest uh, right now for these drivers. So uh, to to grab a junior motorsports driver who has done, you know, has been in the top five, about top three even. And I didn't want to go so far as to say top three in this race. So I'll, I'll go ahead and just sort of give the extra points up to, to something that I'm more comfortable with than the top five at plus 220. So give me Sam Mayer, top five plus 220. Top five seems so much easier to bet on than the top three. It's only two extra spots, but they make such a big difference. Uh, And sometimes it's very much worth taking that little bit of a discount um, for the price. But yeah, I think plus 220 is a great price for Mayer. Uh, Again, yeah, you laid out the case. I've got another bet on him coming up, so I'll talk about him more in a little bit. But I fully endorse that one. Another guy we talk about uh, on a fairly decent basis, Ryan Sieg. I'm actually going to take him to be the Group A winner, I didn't write down what book this was, but I'm pretty sure it was on Caesars. Yes, it is. Um, so Group A, he's matched up. Uh, he's at plus 400. So looking at the odds, um, it's they're all, all of them are plus 400, right? They're just all, it's all long shots. Throw your dart out there and, uh, and see which dart sticks, basically, is kind of the thing. So it is Ryan Sieg, Jeremy Clements, Alex LeBay, Kaz Grala, Parker Retzloff and Sage Karam. So it is a big group. I don't necessarily love taking huge groups like this on a normal basis, but again, on a week like this, not looking to go heavy on the head to heads. I'm not looking at top threes very much. Uh, There's only so much out there for top fives. So this type of group bet is kind of where you can get some value. You're getting a guy at four to one. Sure. He's got to beat all these other drivers, but you could still finish in 30th and beat all of these guys if the things fall the correct way, right? You don't have to worry about he's not gotten into the top five or or he's only running in sixth place. Just finish ahead of these guys. Um, in the thought process with Sieg here, he's very solid on road courses. Not great, right? He's probably not going to win. He's not going to get you a top five most likely, but he gets you solid finishes almost every time. Finished 18th at Portland, 23rd at Coda. Last year, he had a ninth place at the Roval, 13th place at Watkins Glen, a 10th place at Road America. 16th place at Portland, 11th place at Coda. That is a lot of consistent, you know, mid-teens finishes. That's all you're really asking for, most likely, in this type of race. So if he can stay out of trouble, he can finish ahead of these other guys. I feel like Sieg is the type of guy that you can rely on to get you a decent finish. When you're trying to win a group like this, that's not necessarily... None of these guys are are big, uh, you know, huge heavy hitters as far as road courses go. LeBay, to a degree, um, can be. He's not in the greatest equipment, though, uh, and, and so that's kind of a knock against him. Uh, but I think at plus 400, you're getting good enough odds here. And again, that's that's the strategy of this weekend, right? You're trying to just search around. 
almost all again actually i did it again it's all plus odds bets for me um and i think you've only got one that's not plus odds so it that's what you're looking for this week plus odds bet you're trying to find value on the board i think that ryan sieg to win group a here um has some value to it well and again we've talked about it it's just all about chaos and and of these names absolutely yes kaz Grala suffered Rhett's laugh, unfortunately, has suffered a lot. Karam has suffered. And it feels like Ryan Sieg, when he gets into in to trouble, it, it it ruins his day. But if he can stay clean, then, you know, he, he definitely has a good day. So I back you on that. Plus 400 is quite a big, big jump for a, a group uh, winner. So I like that a lot. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to get crazy with mine and I'm going to take Justin Marks, the track house oh, owner. Did I steal it from you? Stole this one from me. I hell yeah. Rod got so into these... the document first. I'd filled out some of my bets. I go to fill them out. I'm like, this motherfucker. He stole them twice. You stole twice from me, too. I was going to take damn right next bet, too. So I love this. Hey, listen, I was uh, I was on the road and had plenty of time to do it. So I was I was pretty excited about that. Um, all right. So I am going to take, uh, like I said, Justin Mark, a top five at plus 325 a lot of what uh cody was saying about paluto to being just somebody that you you can throw if they had a top 10 i'd much feel, i'd feel much more comfortable saying justin marks at a top 10 but since it's only top five i figure five more spots could definitely make the difference for him uh you look back at his xfinity career and actually it's it's not as bad as you may think it is like he ran three races in the uh, in the 2018 season was the last time that he actually ran any in the Xfinity series, a second place at the Charlotte Road, a sixth place at Elkhart Lake. Right. And he was entered into mid Ohio, finished 22 in that one. Um, so it just wasn't a good day for him there. Uh, he was running the 42 Chip Ganassi car in that instance as well. Overall for Justin Marks, though, in the Xfinity series, he's run 15 road courses, um, 10 super speedway or I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, 10, t- uh, four super speedways and then 10 times in super speedways that are one to two miles. But overall, four, 15 road courses, one win, three top fives, seven top tens. Uh, he won at mid Ohio was his, his one win there. So, um, really good on road courses. He hasn't done it in a while. Dustin off his, his, uh, his fire suit for a role in the Chicago streets, but Listen, this guy has nothing, no points to race for, no anything other than just getting out there to run this car and to be one of the competitors. And he's going to make all of the calls that the Xfinity regulars won't, right? He's going to, to zig when they zag because he just wants to win the race. He's not interested in stage points or, or playoff points or anything. He's just there to win and to drive around. So I feel like a guy like that who has a good racing background in the series good road course background in the series. I'll take a chance on him as a plus five at plus three twenty five. Yeah, no, I love this. Uh, again, he's, a, he is a solid driver. He's still been, even this year, uh, a lot of times on Sunday morning, he's out racing a sports car somewhere and then flying to the track after to watch his cars out in the race. Um, so he, he stays in the driver's suit often, been a little bit since he's been in the, in the NASCAR series. Right. But that doesn't scare me too much. And it's that number 10 car, right? Uh, that what AJ Allmendinger's got has he won both road course races he's done I think on that or gotten a first and a second either way like it's performed well we just saw that car win last week in Nashville with AJ behind the wheel we've seen it win with Kyle Larson behind the wheel um and it's had pretty good runs even with Derek Krause behind the wheel Kyle Busch behind the wheel um and so yeah it's a good car again and that's I didn't mention I should have mentioned that at the top right I said we got a, a ringer in a ro- in a Joe Gibbs car in a JRM car, we've also got a ringer of sorts with marks here in a college car, which these college cars can be dangerous as well. Um, so I think it's a great call by you again. Stole it from me, but that's all right. I'm going to go back to the well, Rod. I'm back on the Parker Kligerman train. Plus 200, a top five for him at bet 365. I love me some Parker Kligerman. He's burned me a couple of times, but lately it's been a little better. I, I thought this was crazy. He's got 71 career Xfinity Series starts, 25 top 10 finishes. That's pretty freaking good. Um, but a couple of weeks ago, finished fifth at Sonoma. He was 14th at Portland. Uh, last season, he was 12th place at Coda in the Xfinity Series. He won the Truck Series race at Mid-Ohio. A classic finish, him and Zane Smith battling it out to the end there. 
um, and had a seventh place finish at Sonoma as well. So he's a very good road course racer. Um, and he's, he's proven on road courses this season, specifically road courses and super speedways. This 48 car is a, is a car that can hang with the rest of them. Right. And we've seen him run well. We've seen him be up front. Um, and so I think that Parker Kligerman can get a top five, a two to one. I like me some Parker Kligerman this week. You know, and it's funny because when he was out there, he was actually out there and they were interviewing him while he was out at the track. Uh, first of all, I, I don't, I, I call BS because I think that might have been green screen. No, I'm just kidding. He was out there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he just seemed it's it's funny because of all the heartbreak that he had the night before to be out there having to put your, your game face on and be happy. So, I mean, he's seen this course, right? He saw it before everybody else did. Maybe he was doing a little surveying and a little bit of of looking around. I don't know what good it does you, but getting eyes on the track before everybody else uh, may, may give you a little advantage. He's got all those NBC tie-ins too, right? I mean, he's doing, pulling double duty. He's going to race Saturday, Sunday. He'll be on the coverage on pit road for NBC. Uh, who knows what kind of insight he gets from, from working with those guys. Spy cameras, just checking around, looking to see what's going on. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, my next bet breaks my heart and it always does because it is, the other side of oh. a Sheldon Creed bet. Um, my favorite Canadian, not Canadian from California, uh, Sheldon Creed. Allgaier is in a matchup with him over on Superbook. I'm going to take the Allgaier side of this at minus 110. Allgaier over Creed. Hate to say it. Obviously, it's we love us some Sheldon Creed. Sheldon Creed is is not a bad driver. He's just He's always been in the mix. He's always in the thick of everything. But unfortunately, sometimes it just doesn't equate to good finishes for him. You look back at the last, what, since Darlington. Darlington, he started 7th, finished 25th. Charlotte started 7th, outstanding, finished 28th. Portland, the road course, started on the pole, right? And we all know what happened there with him getting into people, everybody getting into everybody at that race, ended up 7th. And he was lucky to finish 7th, to be honest with you, <laughs> at the end of that one. Uh, Sonoma, he finished 11th after starting third Nashville, 19th finished 17th outstanding starting positions for Sheldon Creed. Unfortunately, he just never is able to pull it through. Uh, and even still when he does pull it through, it's not to where you think you want it. It really at the end, honestly, it's, it's, it's a finish that's good, but he salvages a good finish as for Justin Allgaier. Let's go back to Dover where he finished third after a fit, a starting 18th. Darlington, he started 17th, finished second. Charlotte started from the pole, won from the pole. Portland, fifth, he started, finished second. Sonoma, second, finished seventh, but that was kind of a, a crazy end of that race anyways. And then last week in Nashville was kind of a, a bad week for him. 16th, he started and ended 15th. But the trend here is Allgaier will start poorly, but finish better than he started. So um, all things considered equal for me, I I'm giving the nod here to Allgaier. Again, even in Austin, uh, he he had uh, an eighth place finish, or I'm sorry, fifth place finish after starting eighth. So again, he he's finishing better than he starts week in and week out. His average uh, average finish this year is 10.3, uh, which is crazy to think of after all of those top 10 finishes that he had, uh, where Sheldon Creed finishing 15.5. Allgaier, a really good road course racer, too, in the course of his career. Obviously, a long history with the Xfinity Series. 47 starts and road courses, three wins, 15 top 10 finishes. Or, I'm sorry, 15 top five finishes, 29 top 10 finishes. So, a monster on road courses is Justin Allgaier. Uh, for Sheldon Creed, 10 starts on road courses, uh, no wins, no top fives, four top tens. I didn't mean for it to be uh, uh, JRM heavy, but here we are. Here we are. Uh, yeah, I mean, Creed, oh, man, I feel like we've been having the same conversation for over a year at this point. Like, the dude can just not finish races, and until he can, like, you've got to keep betting against him, and, and it's, you can't even make an argument for him. I mean, he's he's had he's looked great, right? It was one of those, was it Portland, I think, where he looked really good? It didn't matter. Like something still happened. It always happens. There's no room for error at this track. If something's gonna happen. It's gonna find its way to Sheldon Creed most likely. So uh, you can't you can't argue betting against him. Next up for me, also back on the JRM train. You talked about him earlier. I'm gonna take Sam Mayer 
over Sammy Smith at plus 100. Uh, and actually, it's funny because I'm going to make the case for Sammy Smith here in a few. But much like on the Cup Series side of things, if you're going to take head-to-heads, take plus money head-to-heads. I say that after you took a not plus money head-to-head. But, it's, you know, there's a you don't always have to do it. But for the most part, I'm looking at plus money head-to-heads this week, right? Um, and I love Sammy Smith. I think he could potentially even win this race. Spoiler alert, I'm going to pick him to win this race. But if he doesn't win the race, he's a guy that finds trouble so much. It's either you hit big with him or he just completely misses. It seems like he's going to get you a really good finish or he's not going to get you that good of a finish. Uh, And like you talked about, Sam Mayer has been solid at road courses. Just looking for him in this head-to-head to to get a decent finish. And if Sammy Smith wins, I'm not going to care because I'm going to hit that bet. If he doesn't win, he's likely going to finish worse than Mayer. Uh, And again, at plus money, plus 100, give me Sam Mayer over Sammy Smith um, at plus 100. Yeah, and and really, again, you talk about just uh, uh, Mayer being a solid driver week in and week out, and and that to me is is where I really leaned when I was in my top five bet for him. It's just you can't can't necessarily argue. Now, again, this is an unknown. We don't know. This could all end on the first lap after everybody crashes. And what did we say last time? Uh, all it will take is for everybody to crash and for. Uh, Pilato, Andy Lally, the, the only Andy Lally. Lally left on the track, <laughs> <laughs> and then we're we're cashing big with him. So, uh, no, I like that as well. Uh, all right, so you talked about Kligerman in your bet earlier. That this where uh, Cody, I'm taking a plus money bet in a head to head, taking Austin Hill over Parker Kligerman, and again, no knock on Kligerman because obviously Kligerman can get it done. He's he's you like I said, you just laid out all the numbers for Kligerman, but for Austin Hill. I feel like it's just it it could be better. Like Kligerman's potential is for a top five. Austin's potential is to win this thing. So for me, a good day for Austin Hill is a top three finish and or a win. Uh, or even a top five, I guess. Cause really, if you look back at his last few races, Dover finished fourth. Darlington fourth, finished fourth. 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 fourth <laughs> That's fifth. just the answer every finish for Austin Hill. <laughs> it really is too. A fourth at Dover, fourth at Darlington, fourth at Charlington, fifth at Portland. Oh, my goodness. Uh eighth at Sonoma and fourth at Nashville. But again, you know, he's got three three wins already this season. He's competing for a win every single week. Whether or not he's like leading laps, uh, because you know, spoiler alert, he's not leading a lot of laps right now. Uh, but again, the point is he's usually in the mix. Even if it's not at the beginning, hell, even if it's not even in the middle, normally at the end of the race, he finds himself somewhere in the equation to be one of the winners. And uh, again, for Austin Hill, it's it's no knock on Kligerman. It's it's just that if Austin Hill finishes third and Kligerman's finished fourth, you still cash this bet uh, for the top five for Kligerman and uh, Austin Hill finishing better. And we've seen that happen this season where we take somebody as a top five car then we take uh, somebody else in a head to head and it's it'll take but one position more than, than for you to cash both of them. So I think this is a, a situation in which both of ours can cash. Yeah, absolutely. They both can cash. And again, a plus money side of things on a head to head. Hard to argue with that. As much as I do like Kligerman and I'm going to continue to make the case for him here in a minute. Uh, it, it's still Austin Hill is so consistent. I mean, literally like eight fourth place finishes in a row. He's consistent. You know, you're going to get that good finish. There's still some ups and downs with Kligerman, still some ups and downs with that big machine racing team. Um, so I don't think that it's a bad bet at all. Next up for me, this is where it gets fun, Rod. This is where you're just rooting for complete and utter chaos, throwing some darts out there. Uh, again, top 10 odds not available for Xfinity for whatever dumb reason. So we got to go with the top five odds, but that's okay. If the chaos strikes, maybe one of these will cash. I'm going to take Preston Partis for a top five finish plus 900 over on bet 365. Um, He's raising a family owned team. So debatable if it'll make it to the end. But uh, (laughs) again, when you talk about guys that might not even make the race, this could be one of them, right? But he does have some experience. That's what you're looking at here. If he can avoid chaos, if things, he's probably not going to come out and just finish fifth, right? But if there are some big wrecks, if he can avoid things, he can play his cards right it's possible for a guy like this to get a top five finish in a completely crazy race which back in nashville last week like 
a completely crazy race where the leaders take each other out, the fastest cars have problems, is not completely out of the question on a normal oval track in Xfinity. Now you're going to throw them on the streets of Chicago. Anything can happen, right? So um, Pardis competes full-time in the SCCA. Um, he won the 2017 Spec Miata Class Championship in that. Um, been a rough start to his season. He has a 31st and a 36th place finish at Coda in Portland. So, again, but there has been some upsides. Last year at Road America, he finished 11th, 14th at Coda. In 2021, he had a 7th place finish at the Roval. Right there, right? A 7th place finish at the Roval. Things fell his way. Maybe there was some cardboard on the track like that track likes to have. <laughs> Doesn't matter. He found his way to 7th. If you can find your way to 7th, at 9-1, to one, there's a case to be made. You can find your way to 5th, right? A 16th at Road America, a 14th at Coda, also in 2021. Those are respectable finishes. So, again, he's going to need some help, right? That's I'm not saying he's going to come out and just be that fast, but he can put himself in position. He's got the, the road course racing background, the street course racing background that can help him out a little bit. Um, and I think that at this, these odds, he is worth a shot. I'm also going to take the guy I didn't know his name earlier, Brent Sherman. <laughs> A top five plus at 18 to one over bet 365. So listen, I didn't even know who this guy was before today, to be completely honest with you, but he's in that number 28 Ryan Sieg racing car, Rod. I know that he's probably not going to have help from Stuart Haas set this car up. I get it. But that car won a couple of weeks ago with Eric Almarola, obviously a little bit of a difference in Brett Sherman and Eric Almarola. Again, I understand this, right? But, but is there? <laughs> well, you know, I think there is. But, um, <laughs> so for Sherman, this is actually pretty cool. He was in the Air Force for six years, uh, so he's a veteran of the Air Force. Kind of did that before he got into racing, right? So maybe there's still hope for us yet, Rod, in my <laughs> racing career. <laughs> okay, maybe not, but uh, no, <laughs> we'll stick, stick I, to I, the I racing. Think, I think but, I'll uh, stick to being road rage on the freeway. That's that's yeah, the extent exactly. of my racing. <laughs> um, but then he did the uh, the Barber Dodge Pro Series. Uh, the uh, Great American Road Racing Association. He was in Indy Lights. He's got six Cup Series starts under his belt. He's got 61 Xfinity Series starts on his belt. Um, so again, not a stranger, not just a, a road course guy, a street course guy that's jumping into these cars for the first time. He's got some experience in these cars. Not a bunch of great finishes at all by any means, but again, it's that 28 Ryan Sieg Racing car. We've seen a couple of success the last couple of weeks, the Amarola thing. Zane Smith had a great finish on the Oval last week. There's some life in that car. Um, and again, it's 18-1 to 1 for a reason, right? He's going to need some help. But if all hell breaks loose, we've got a contingency plan put in place. That's why you take some of these long shots. Eric Amarola wasn't going to win at Sonoma either, right? He was 200-1, to 1, Rod. No chance. No chance. He's not going to win in a Ryan C. Well, guess what happened? Right, Martin Truex, won. thirty-five to one, Sonoma. I mean, they're long shot bets for a reason, but it doesn't mean they can't cash. Give me Brent Sherman. Now, nah, what did I say? So eighteen to one. I lost it. Already. Eighteen to one. Yes, eighteen to one for a top five finish over on Bet Three Sixty Five. If you find top tens anywhere, first of all, let us know where because that'd be great. Uh, but I've not seen them to this point. But all these guys, I would take them at, at their top tens too. I mean, the odds obviously are going to be cut, but a much better chance of getting in the top 10 than the top five, like we talked about before. But again, not completely impossible. Worth the sprinkle for sure. I mean, top 10 is not that far away from a top five. It's, it's a, it's a late restart hey. craziness away from being a yeah. top five. Well, and that's the thing too, is, I mean, even if the entire race, these guys are running in 25th, we get to the end, they stay out or other people pit and they, whatever the situation might be, we end up going to eight overtimes, right? And every time we go into the car, we saw it the first year at the Roval, right? Literally, on that late restart, every single car in the field just drove straight into the wall almost. Like, it, it was like that, you know, they show you, you know, the ducks flying on the ground or whatever, and they, they all just go, follow the leader, right? It's crazy. Like, there's some crazy shit could happen. I'm not saying it's gonna, but it could happen this weekend. And they, you, that's what this is for, like, Brent Sherman maybe nowhere near anything, and then nine overtimes later, holy shit, where'd this guy come from? He just finished fifth and cashed your 18-1. Like, imagine that sweat, Rod. That The sweat alone would be worth it. So uh, 
and you're being your bird dog, so it's not an uncomfortable sweat. <laughs> oh, man, it's great. <laughs> Uh, you are a company man. Uh, all right, I love the I love the wackiness. I love the craziness because again, when else are you going to place a Brent Sherman bet again. in your life? Maybe never again. This type of race, you might not even race ever. Who knows? Like, <laughs> but in this type of race, have fun with your bets. This is Andy Lally yesterday, Brent Sherman today. These are the fun ways to place bets. And, and you know, you just light the ticket on fire, but maybe you'll have to put that fire out and cash it. Who knows? Hells yeah. You know, I figure our audience already knows by now that if you are a professional hardcore gambler, you probably aren't listening to this show because you you just we want you to have fun. Like this is for those of you who want to have fun with life and not sit there and, and worry about every little thing that you do. And uh, anyway, uh, you, all right. you can't listen to the show because you can't believe in momentum either. <laughs> no, that's true, too. Uh, all right. Winning car number. Fine. You guys want one? I'll give one to you then. How's that? Uh, the winning car I'm going to pick for odd. This is at plus money, and this is why I picked it. It's because it's at plus 160. Um, I, I like the the stable of racers that you get with this. Obviously, you get Sam Mayer in that one. Um, you get Justin Allgaier in the seven. That's already two fantastic junior motorsports cars. You get Brandon Jones at nine. Nah, we've made cases for worse, I suppose. <laughs> hey, uh, anything can happen this weekend, Rod. Maybe it's Brandon Jones week. <laughs> well, fine. Then the number 11 car could end up winning too. I, oh, I don't have God, my beat button here. I'm up. sorry, Ty Tiger. <laughs> I, I can't give you the laugh today uh, of that. Uh, you've got Connor Mosack, which again, if you're throwing caution to the wind, why the hell not? Don't, don't count Mosack out. I know we haven't talked about him, but he's in that he's in a JGR car and he's a the good 19. road course racer. Yes. Yeah. It's not, don't count him out for sure. So then we've got Austin Hill, Brett Moffitt, You've got Jeb Burton. You've got Parker Retzlaff, which, well, okay, whatever. Alex LeBay. Uh, you've got Ryan Sieg, which we know that Cody likes. you got Jeffrey Earnhardt. you got Je uh, Jeremy Clements. You've got uh, Brad Perez, even, if he makes that race. Who knows? Uh, and then you got Dexter Bean, if he makes it in the 91. So, okay, you know where the heavy hitters lie, and that's within the first few numbers that I called out. But... Those are all some heavy hitters, you know, and at plus 160, I already made the case, like I said, for Austin Hill, and I'll, I'll make more of it later. But, um, you know, you, you got the 11 car. Can we say his name yet? No. Are we done with the beeping? Okay. So we he's got to win car. us some money before we say his name ever again. <laughs> We've got it the 11 car. a lot of money. <laughs> he has. Who is also in a, in a colleague car, which we talked about with uh, that 10 car, that all-star 10 car. I mean, you know, if we think colleague's going to be decent on this track, then you might as well give that one a, a list. But anyways, I, I I'm gonna go I'm gonna roll with odd because I still think an odd number is actually gonna win this one outright. So I'll take the double dip on that one. And so far, these winning numbers have been kind of hitting. So that's why I slid one in there. I wasn't gonna do it, but I was like, you know what? To hell with it. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put one in there this week. No, I love I love it. You got to keep on it, right? And to the Connor Mozak point too, we didn't talk about him just because it's odd. I mean, he's the sixth favorite to win this race. T really tied for fourth favorite at ten to one. Like. He's got a legit shot to win this race. So uh, the odds aren't quite good enough where you probably want to place a bet on him. Uh, plus 190 for a top five. You, you could probably make a pretty good case there, but man. But I did want to just bring him up. But no, I, I think, again, on a type of bet like this where anything can happen, there's not, it's, it's so wide open. You have to take the plus money side of this, plus 160, and you're still getting a lot of really good drivers, a lot of really good cars. Uh, I think that that's a great call. And, and again, I don't argue with you on your uh, your winning number bets, anyways. <laughs> Good job. Good job. <laughs> uh, all right. So that comes to the end. I, I, that little awkward pause. That was funny. We were just sitting there. Uh, uh, are we? What are we going to do? Uh, are we? Uh, so, well, you know, I was kind of waiting. Are we? Do, do we have some, one more break? I felt like <laughs> we do. We do. As a matter of fact, thank you, Cody. For for I am not in my comfort zone right now. And, and for those of you watching on YouTube, you know exactly that. As you see. Like I said, bathed in heavenly light here. I'm going to fix that before the next video comes out, I'll tell you. Uh, but for those of you who are watching on YouTube, thank you so much for putting up with the connectivity issues, the lagging, the whatever else you see going on right now, the not normal background for me. You guys make this so much easier to have days like this or weeks like this where I've got to be on location somewhere different. and. You know, it, it's, it's not what we're used to, but the fact that you guys keep subscribing, you keep liking, you keep commenting, it just goes miles into letting us know that it's okay. 
and that you love us regardless of what we look like uh, or sound like or do for you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yes, you love us. We love you. For those of you listening on the OG platforms, all of the Spotify's and the uh, other podcatchers out there, thank you for sticking with us too through the all of the glitches and glamours of, of trying to figure out how to bring this show on location uh, and continue to bring it out to you in a timely manner. Uh, but again, we just love you guys so much. Continue to like, continue to subscribe, leave a five-star review. Tell us that uh, you didn't like the light. Tell us that you didn't like anything. Um, but more than that, tell us that you liked it all. <laughs> we'll love you forever for it. Uh, yeah. So I pandered enough. Let's get back to the show. I love it, Ron. I, I love your, uh, your, your YouTube reads are always my favorite. You know, and it's funny because uh, I watched uh, Howard Stern and I love that. I love the movie Private Parts. Right. And there's this part in the movie where uh, it's it, it, Howard actually d figures out his voice. Right. And he goes to his wife. What part of the show did you like? And she was like, oh, I like that part where you screwed up on the commercial and you just you just laid it all out there. And he was like, but I messed that part up. She goes, yeah, but you were real. And that's what I liked about it. And I was like. Oh my God, this is like a revelation. And that's what it is. Yeah, Sometimes you just, cause you're real. Yeah. there And there's something to that. I mean, yeah. And not to get off too much on a tangent, but I heard on the, the Dale Jr. download the other day, they were talking to one of the, the bosses from NBC and Dale Jr. was talking to him about, I really want to become a professional broadcaster. And, and the guy's like, we don't want you to be a professional broadcaster. We want you to be Dale and Hardy Jr. That's what people are, are here to listen to you for. So it's uh yeah, something to be said for it. So I love the, uh, the realness to it and it's, it's always great oh shucks <laughs> all right all right that's enough sappy shit let's get into some winners let's pick some Again, winners treating this like a super speedway right same thing i did in the cup series it's like the first touchdown bet take a unit split it up four ways however you want to do it i found four guys i like the odds here parker kligerman 12 to 1 already talked about him of course um, and I, I know that you mentioned that he doesn't have a chance to win. I think that you're wrong, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> just kidding. Well, not really. Actually, yeah. No, but you're not. Cause I'm you're not new. kidding, but <laughs> I do think he has a chance to win. Uh, again, is he probably gonna need a little help? Maybe, but really, I, I think that on an ovals, they've proven they can't really hang with the top dogs really, but like on the road courses, it's a little bit different. Obviously on the super speedways, it's different as well. Um, and I really think that Kligerman has a chance this week at 12 to one. Uh, again, you look at the top of the odds board, right? And it's Cole Custer up top at, uh, is it like plus 450? It's like, ooh, I mean, I know he got that one win on a road course where he kind of lucked into it because he didn't really, you know, and then he, he didn't look that great at Sonoma. Why is he plus 450? I don't know. Sheldon Creed plus five. I, I used to love betting on Sheldon Creed to win because you'd get him like 20 to one every week. And it's like, even though he keeps getting all these shitty finishes, you'd want it, but at plus 550, but as much as he wrecks, like, and then even all guy at six to one, it's like you like it, but yeah. But then I mean, after that, that's when things get a little more exciting as you get a little farther down. So, Kligerman twelve to one, I really like him. Sammy Smith, the argument earlier, right to, to bet against him in the head to head because it's either a very good run or a not good run. This is where you're hoping for the very good run, right? Sammy Smith can win um, this type of race. He finished ninth at Sonoma. He was fourth at Coda. Last season, he was third at Watkins Glen. And then at Road America last year, he was top five in the closing laps before something on the car broke. Um, and, and again, it's a JGR car. These cars are fast. They have speed. Um, and Sammy Smith has proved at points that he, he can win, right? He got a win already this season, so he's gotten that off of his back. Um, and he can do it. 14-1, to 1, I think that he's a really good option. Miguel Paluto, talked about him earlier. Again, he's in a junior motor sports car. That alone at 20 to 1 makes him worth a look. Then you put all of his his history and all the experience he has on the street courses and everything. Um, I really like that. And then absolutely ridiculous, Rod. Josh Berry is 30 to 1. Why is Josh Berry 30 to 1? This makes no sense to me. Again, he's in a JRM car. Uh I, I, I don't understand this, and he's pretty good at road courses. Like, you go back and you look, he was fourth place at Portland. He was eighth place at Coda, eighth place at the Roval last year, ninth place at Watkins Glen, a 14th place at the Indy Road Course, 
third at Road America last year, fourth place at Portland last year. Like, I know there's no wins in there yet, but those are some very, very good runs. I mean, he's got three top four finishes on road courses in the Xfinity series. There's no Cup Series guys in this race, and he's 30 to one again in a race where anything can happen. So, sure, maybe Justin Marks is one of the best cars. Maybe Sammy Smith is one of the best cars. These guys end up getting in wrecks. Things happen to them. And Josh Berry can be right there. He he's uh he's got so much racing experience under his belt, right? All the stuff he's learned in the late models. Now he's come up to the NASCAR. He's he's got some some chances and some really good Cup Series equipment filling in for guys. You know, it's doing spot duty here and there. He's had the Junior Motorsports ride for a couple of seasons now. He already knows he's going into the Cup Series next year. Doesn't have a win yet on the season. Why not this weekend? Why is he thirty? He shouldn't be thirty to one. I bet him at ten to one. Probably not. But thirty to one for Josh Berry? It's absolutely ridiculous, Rod. Give me some Josh Berry thirty to one to win this race. Well, full disclosure, he was one of the guys that I had slotted into a top five before I realized that I was picking all JRM cars again. So <laughs> just know that I am with you on that there one because go. again, thirty to one is a disrespectful price for him. Yes. And and you know we know Junior Motorsports is fast and. In this type of a situation, I think all of these guys, unless they take each other out, are are going to have good runs. And and you know, for me, Josh Berry, I've I'm always on Justin Algar. I feel like every week I find a way to bet on Justin Algar, which has you know been profitable more times than it hasn't. But Josh Berry's been that guy that's sort of kind of flown under the radar in this, weirdly enough. Um, but he's still got enough attention to to garner the four car, uh, which is probably why he he's sort of been you know, not necessarily brought up in the Xfinity because he's kind of more in the cup conversations. But yeah, 30 to one's disrespectful. You got to give some love to there. I love that bet, by the way. And I backed that 110% because um, I just didn't want to be too too JRM heavy on this card as well. So I, I backed off a of Barry, but I'll back you on that. Um, I liked the, the like you said, the top of the charts for me didn't do me any sort of fun because yeah, they could all probably win. And then for Sheldon Creed to be up there, I kind of scratched my head on that one too. I was like, I don't, I don't necessarily know. And there was a little fluctuation within the books too, as far as who was priced at what at the top. So um, I found some value on Superbook with uh, Austin Hill uh, at 16 to one. I already talked about him earlier in our, my Hill over Kligerman. To me, it just, he had, to, he doesn't have a road course win yet, but again, we're not on a road course. We're actually on a street course. So there's, there's no, this is not anything that he's ever been on. But in 11 road course starts for Austin Hill, he's got four top fives, six top tens. He's been circling the, I don't want to say drain because that's that's the other one, but he's been circling. He's been within the bullseye range, right? He hasn't hit the bullseye yet, but the dude's been in that just ring right outside of the bullseye so many times. And, you know, with all things being equal in this instance, maybe Austin Hill is going to be able to punch through. And, and I think 16 to one, is a really good price for a guy that finishes fourth in just about every single race that there is, especially given that, you know, some of the favorites are up there at plus 450, uh, plus 500. If you're going to give me Austin Hill at 16 to one, I'm going to take him because I feel like that's really good value for him over on Superbook. And then just for my craziness, I'm going to throw out Justin Marks because who knows? 22 to one for Justin Marks to win. It's funny because this price, Barry is priced higher than Justin Marks, which should tell you everything you need to know about where the books think this is going to be. Because it's crazy to think that Justin Berry, a a cut or a, a Xfinity regular, is thirty to one. Justin Marks, who has not put on a, a suit for the Xfinity in a very long time, is at twenty two to one. So, but I again, I think if this is a race where you know strategies out the window for guys like him. Guys like some of these other, you know, GT guys that are coming into race. If there's nothing on the line other than a win for a guy like Justin Marks, especially who is a team owner. And so he knows all of it. Like you're more powerful as a person if you know everything about everything, right? If you know a little bit about something, let's put it that way, a little bit about everything in, that goes on. He knows from every standpoint, he, the, the, the pit crew standpoint, he knows from the owner standpoint, how to, how to get around these tracks. So I don't know. For me, it just feels like he's probably going to do well. And if he does well, he may end up winning if the chips fall the right way and chaos ensues. So I'll take Justin Marks at 22 to one as my kind of long shot, I guess. Yeah, I love both of these picks. 
Austin Hill at 16 to 1 any week. How many times have we bet him just because of his price and he's won or he's got really close to winning? He, he's an auto fill when he gets odds like this. Um, so I love that. And Justin Marks, again, I was going to put him as one of my winners. You beat me to it. So you stole the thunder, but I can easily see him taking that 10 card of victory lane this weekend. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like all, all six of these guys are really good options. And again, I know it's six different options, but 12 to 1 being the shortest one, you can split things up right, pick the guys you think we made the best cases for, and uh, I feel like we got some some good chances here. You know, again, that's we we have conditioned our audience to understand what this show is all about. You're not betting every single pick, and we're not tracking them for you as, we, as if you are picking every single one. Pick the ones you like. I mean, we hit, and then that's fun. It's, it's just, uh, it's time to have fun. I, I've I've had a lot of tragedy happen over the last couple of days for a lot of a lot of my close friends, but uh, I, I just I, I need people to have fun. That's that's really what this world is all about. So, um, yeah. And then the whole thing with Jimmy Johnson, like that, kind of rocked me to the core. So, just have fun, folks. Like, make this fun. Don't don't turn this into something that it it doesn't have to be. That's betting is fun. NASCAR is fun. Let's put them all together and, and have some fun. So exactly, especially especially on a week like this. Where it's where it's something new. It's a new experience. It's if seventy five years of NASCAR. We've never had this before. It, just enjoy this. Have fun. Play some bets. Let's win some money. It's gonna be a good time. It is. Uh, all right. Get your pen and paper out. I'm gonna go over the bets for this. The loop. I hate having to say the name of this. The loop one twenty one because there's no good way to get into it. Uh, this is the picks for the loop one twenty one from the Chicago Street Course. Cody started you out with Mr. Paluto as a top five car at plus 300 over there on bet 365. I said Sam Mayer was going to be a top five car at plus 220 over on bet 365. However, I put in the document bet 356 there. That book does not exist. So just, yeah. Uh, and then Cody gave you Ryan Sieg as the winner of group a at plus 400 with Clements, La, uh, Labe, uh, Grala, Retzlaff and Karam. Um, I know it's LeBay, guys. Get off my back. I'm still trying to. <laughs> <laughs> LeBay, LaBay, whatever. LeBay, LaBay, In whatever. France, it's LaBay. La <sighs> Jesus Christ. I, I gave you Justin Marks as a top five car at plus 325 on bet 365. Uh, Cody gave you Parker Kligerman as a top five car at plus 200. I said Justin Allgaier was going to finish better than uh, Sheldon Creed at minus 110. Cody said Sam Mayer was going to finish better than Sammy Smith at plus 100. I said Austin Hill was going to finish better than Parker Kligerman at plus 100. Cody gave you Pardis as a top five car at plus 900. Sherman as a top five car at 18 to one. I said the winning car was going to be odd at plus 160. Cody gave you Kligerman to win at 12 to one. Sammy Smith at 14 to one. Uh, Paluto at 20 to one. And Barry at 30 to one. I followed up with Hill at 16 to one. And Marks at 22 to one to win. The Loop 121, the first ever street course in NASCAR history and the first cars to take the track uh, as far as racing is concerned on this street track. So I tell you, cup, cup drivers are going to learn a lot by watching this race. These Xfinity drivers are the guinea pigs. Yeah, absolutely. They are going to have their eyes glued to this. It'll be interesting to see how things go. If it, if it ends up where we end up in nine overtimes, does NASCAR change anything on how they do the restarts before Sundays, right? Like any number of things to watch. So, you know, th it's going to be important to watch Saturday's race to see how it goes to see, to get somewhat of an idea of what might happen on Sunday. So, uh, man, oh, so excited for this weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, again, this is just so fun to bet on these types of weeks. We've got Atlanta next week too. love to bet on a track like that. Uh, super speedway is one of my favorite ones to bet on. It's going to be a fun time. And, and, uh, Again, we're kind of treating this like the same thing. It's going to be exciting to see how this all ends up shaking out, whether it's a horrible chaos or if it's some great thing that, that opens up all kinds of other opportunities. Who knows? But uh, I'm excited for the unknown. Indeed. Well, no trucks we know for sure uh, on this track. So this will be, of course, the last pick show. We will have DFS back uh, this week again. And, uh, yeah, and then we'll have one open show. We have some plans for it. We'll hopefully get uh, get what we need to get those plans in order. So 
uh, look out for that one maybe, as maybe well. Maybe not the last pick show of the week, Rod. Who no, knows? that's true. <laughs> oh, yeah, we could come back with another bonus pick if they give us better odds for stuff. There so. you go. Uh, okay, well, then never mind. I'll put a pin in that. So, yes, uh, again, we are looking forward to it as well. Stay tuned to the channel. Of course, you'll know the DFS show when it comes out. And then, of course, the uh, bonus or whatever we end up doing for this this uh, Friday episode. Check out the F1 Gambling Podcast. We've got the Austri Austrian Grand Prix coming up. This one proves to be a lot of fun as well. So um, check that out. That's going to come on the feed, too, later in the week. Uh, but yeah, we're we're having some fun. Cody, uh, let's wrap it up then tonight and let's send everybody on their way or today or however. You, I don't know. Whatever. You, you, you whatever know what you're listening. Podcast. <laughs> yeah. Wrap it up. Send you on your way. Yes. Well, how do they find you on social media? Follow me on Twitter at Husker underscore Z. Find all my work over there. Got an AFC South article out previewing the uh, the division. The best bets, props to place for that division. Got that underdog article I talked about earlier. That should be out when you're listening to this or shortly after. Check that out as well. Uh, and yeah, find all my work over there on Twitter at Husker underscore Zeb. Check out the F1 Gambling Podcast. We've been having a lot of success in F1 lately, despite Max Verstappen winning by 49 seconds every week. Still plenty of ways to bet on it, just like NASCAR. Join us over there as well. Hey, you can win money however far he ends up winning. And that's that's the glued part about that. You can actually pick the winning margin. You can margin bet on that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can. Uh, all right. Follow me on Twitter at RJ Via Gomez. Link in the bottom. Everything I got going on, whether it is here, whether it is in between media. Check out the back road. I'm not going to be able to be on it this week, obviously, but they are still carrying on. Seth and uh, and Elliot having a good time out there. Check in with them. And then, of course, my article for Frequency State coming out as well this week. A lot of fun to be had. Check us out for DFS. We're coming back to you tomorrow. Until then, let's go racing and let it ride.